Is there any kind of feeling among the offensive players that the defense needs to step up really for y'all to have a good season this year? Is there any, what's the dynamic like? No, um, no, because the turnovers particularly. I mean, our defense, they only drove on our defense once last week in the first half. Um, every, all of their points came from field goals and, and off of turnovers. Uh, so I think in order to have merit to that argument, we would, the offense would have to stop turning the ball over in such terrible places. Um, and that's quite a lot of uh, points off the board for them. And also we don't capitalize very well on, on our turnovers. I think we're so far this season at like 10 points off of um, when we create turnovers. So, I mean, we have to do a lot more um, as well in offense. Were there extra strip drills or anything? Or did the coaches emphasize um, ball security? Yeah, there, there's, uh, you emphasize sometimes differently for uh, the scout team and uh, different things from focus on. Um, but I mean, it's a lot of it's, a lot of it's just a mindset kind of thing. You gotta go into a game and, and just believe that you are um, to the superior team and, and play like it. And uh, I mean, everyone in college football, I would say, and, and major schools around the country has the tools. It's a lot of it's just kind of a mindset. Have you talked to Theo Howard after his performance last week and given him any encouragement how, or has the team responded that way? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're all very encouraging to one another. Our receivers are incredibly unselfish. Um, our running backs are incredibly unselfish. Our offensive line is incredibly unselfish. As you can see, we have a kind of rotating fashion to how we uh, um, play. I mean, we of course have our anchors, like DA will play 500 plays if it's required of them. But, um, all, all of our guys are coming and selfish and, and we're all rooting for each other because we understand that um, from team success comes individual success. You've had a lot of success running the ball this year. When you're out there, is there a little part of you that's a little bit worried though because you're kind of exposing yourself to you know, an injury, a hit that could, that could be? No, no, not the slightest. We saw Pickett uh, shoot some tweets out in the middle of last week's game uh, about targeting. Obviously, you're the guy people always talk about social media with. Did you see the tweets and what did you think about them? Yeah, I saw them. Uh, there's some merit to it. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to comment too much on like rules, but I, I just think that sometimes um, when both guys are going head up, I'm, I'm fully in support of the whole defenseless thing, but I think it's rough sometimes when guys are um, both equally sort of see each other coming and they're both going for it. Um, both, both guys have to protect themselves. I completely understand the defenseless thing. I'm more on the side of that with receptor receivers going up to get the ball and stuff, but I think picket situation and, and even the one that Stanford had on us, some of those are a little bit um, on the fringe, I guess you could say. Going off the, the running thing, uh, you've had a couple of pretty awkward slides. Have any of the coaches or your teammates you know, sort of talked to you about that? Um, well, I'm actually, what I'm trying to do is, is dive this year to get a few more yards and protect myself because a lot of the times, um, a lot of the times when you expose your whole body to a slide, in the NFL, if a guy will go for a quarterback, all, all it is is, I mean, it, it's like you lose a lot of money. In college, all you'll take is maybe you'll sit out a game and 15 yards, and if they can knock your quarterback out, they'll take that. So um, a lot of it's just protecting yourself, and I'm just trying to um, get down and do that in the best way possible. How much will the, the way this season goes and ends up factor into your decision about coming back or not? Um, I really haven't even thought about that one. I mean, my biggest transition this off season with my shoulder and all that stuff was to bring the focus back and think more day by day. So um, that question will be addressed a little bit uh, later down the road. I haven't even given any of that rule of thought. Saw you out here getting some extra reps in. Uh, is, there, is there kind of a sense of determination uh, on the defense right now to kind of get this turned around? Uh, yeah, I remember Coach Morris saying, best defenses are the ones that stick to their assignments and play together as one. So right now, each one of us are just sticking to our script and doing our assignments and it should show off Saturday night. Coach was talking about some, some new ways to kind of get open field tackling practice with having Alloway kind of trail the runner and then go off. How much did have things like that kind of help you guys? Oh, it definitely helps out a lot. You know, we come out early, get some tackling drills in, do an interview, do a lot of tackling drills. So just honestly put all the uh, little pieces together and making it as a whole and making us as a whole player. It just helps us out a lot when we uh, get live. How have you felt four games in? college football experience how you have a handle on it some parts of it are maybe still a little too fast uh, just tell us your overall feeling uh, it's right? definitely a journey you know this is uh, as a young man go through this journey at a young age you know I have a lot of brothers around me great coaching best coaching staff I've been around so just being around them 
that helped me give me a helping hand. And when things are going down, I learned to just have a short term memory. So it's definitely a long journey, but I can't wait to keep it going. How's Coach Meade been instrumental? Oh, yeah, that? definitely. Coach Meade definitely uh, gave me all the tools I need to be a great player. And each and every day, I just want to learn from him. Two weeks, two weeks in a row, you faced pretty strong offenses in Memphis and then Stanford. How do you think that's helped you uh, kind of get better? Definitely, it definitely uh, make me stay true to myself and my scheme and my technique. So, if I uh, when I play outside of that, it definitely when I don't play my best. So I learned to just stay true to my technique, just trust it and go out there and play. Is that kind of hard to do? Sometimes you want to make the big play, you want to kind of be the hero. Sometimes but you have to remember to stay with it. Yeah, exactly. Team. I always go back to the high school during age. I do too much. But I got to stick to my script and stick to, stick to this team, team script and just do my assignment. And everything will be okay. Okay. What's, Go ahead. What's the approach on turning your head on a deeper pass? Uh, now, if I could touch, I'm gonna turn my head. Honestly, that's the thing. Uh, but most of the time, I feel like when I don't turn my head, I'm afraid of the back shoulder pass. You know, that's a new thing that's coming around. So I'm just gonna turn my head and just play ball. How much confidence do you have that this defense can be good by the end of the season? Oh yeah, it's definitely gonna see. A, it's gonna be a big shift this Saturday, in my opinion. We uh. This, this team right now, we don't have no, we call them energy vampires. We've been positive throughout all the adversity. So uh, it's just a great team, a great environment. And each and every day we're out here smiling and working. So I feel like other teams would be on a downfall because they lost two games in a row. But this is a different vibe over here and I love it. What is an energy vampire? Uh, somebody who's just <laughs> sucking all the energy out of you. Somebody who's not a great influencer or a great uh, leader. So somebody who's saying, oh, we got practice again. Oh, we." We got to face this opponent, but we don't have any of those guys, and we're just sticking to our script and playing ball. How big was it getting Jaleel back last year? Oh, definitely. He's a big asset to the team. He, he provides yeah. us with the juice and provides us with the uh, wisdom. But uh, we have a lot of guys who can fill his role, but not too many guys can fill his role on bringing the energy. Uh, can you talk a little bit about kickoff returns? You've been pretty close to you know, breaking one out and returning one for a touchdown. What's the, like, maybe a couple things that the team needs just to get over that edge and hopefully for you to break one back to the house? Uh, we're going to keep on doing what we're doing, you know, just uh, practicing it each and every day and taking it day by day. It's not just an a, a overnight thing. It's going to pop a 100-yard kickoff return, but we're going to take it slowly, and uh, good things going to happen very soon. Had a great practice again today, so we put uh, together two really good practices, really focused on third down today, and uh, did some great work with uh, – Fundamental techniques. When, so. Sorry. Uh, when you look at kind of some of the problems the defense is having, where, where is the defensive line kind of fitting into that right now? Well, it fits as, as a whole. Uh, I see one defense as 11 guys. And uh, it's guys doing their jobs, trusting in each other. And uh, to do that, it takes synergy and it takes experience. And, you know, we saw some improvement, as, as weird as that sounds. We saw some improvement in certain areas, but I think what happens is guys get anxious, they want to make plays, and they do extra effort things, and they forget about what their job is. And so that's where we can get in trouble as a defense. Guys need to stay home, do their job, trust each other, and uh, we could definitely improve in those areas. So a lot of it might be gap responsibility, you're saying, from the front seven? It can be. Way? It can be gap responsibilities. Certainly at times we had tackling issues. Uh, you know, you look at Texas A&M, we came out and we were in the 90 percentile in tackles, which was awesome. Uh, we continue to do those same drills uh, throughout the year. It's just this week uh, or this past week, it, it wasn't the same. So it comes down to fundamental techniques, like all areas of football, and of course, doing their assignment alignment and techniques. How, did the, how does the line go about helping to generate uh, a better pass rush? I think you guys have only had three sacks in your last three games. From yeah, I mean, sacks are uh, certainly a statistic everybody looks at. You know, we also break down how we affect the passer. Are we getting quarterback hurries? Yes. Are we getting quarterback hits? Yes. Uh, are we forcing him out of the pocket? Yes. Are we squeezing the pocket and making him uh, change his eyes? So we actually have statistics on that also. Uh, and so those are things, too, we look at. Um, I think generating more pass rush uh, comes down to fundamental techniques. Uh, improving, uh, understanding what uh, protections we're going to see weekly, and adjusting our pass rush to that. So I, I've seen, uh, you know, we haven't seen the sacks, but we've seen the hurries, the knockdowns, the pressures. Lindsay, be nice to get there, though. Yeah, and Lindsey's another, it's like a gauntlet of ball players who 
facing now after going from love to love. We're, we're seeing him all this year, yeah, what, which is a great challenge. He is a uh, very steady back. Uh, he does a great job of pushing the point of attack. And if it's not there, he's patient, and then he'll make the cutback. So talking about trying to do too much, we can't do that this week. We have to do a great job of doing our jobs, staying home, and, uh, and finding that ball carrier. But he is a, a very good back. Uh, his backup, uh, Bo Bisharat, is a physical kid. They use him a lot too. And uh, so we're going to have a challenge this week. No question. Who are some of the younger guys on the defensive line you've seen develop, step up so far this season? I think, you know, Goze has done an excellent job. Uh, this is his first year playing nose guard in, in uh, his career. Uh, we recruit him as a defensive end, and we saw uh, the potential for him to go inside. Uh, at first, I thought he'd be more of a three technique because he's a good, very good pass rusher. But uh, he's got uh, some great instincts inside, naturally. Uh, he's able to take on double teams. Uh, his technique's improved. Uh, so I, I think uh, he's a guy that has, is starting to emerge. Uh, the other guys, you know, uh, Martin's been a little hobbled, but I'm impressed with him when he's been in there. Um, certainly we miss Jalen, and hopefully we'll get him back soon. It's kind of a day-by-day -day situation, but he was off to a very good start. Uh, so those three guys, uh, those young guys, are doing a nice job for us. You, you talked last year about getting the iPads down the sideline. I know you don't have them because the NCAA didn't approve it, but uh, how much would that, something like that, be able to help in-game adjustments? And oh, it'd be huge. It would be really big, especially when you have a young group or an inexperienced group, and to have that feedback immediately to coach off that, it would be a huge impact. So is the hope that you'll have it next season? Yes. I believe the reason they postponed it was to make sure all the schools financially were ready to make that big step. Uh, but I definitely see that coming. Obviously, you guys see the high school games. Uh, I mean, almost every high school now has the iPads on the sidelines, and obviously the NFL does. So I think we're the, we're the next ones.